Hi, this is Rick Williams with Pump Supply in Elgin, Illinois, here to show how the Wanner T100 pump uh, is easy to take apart and maintenance friendly. Wanner's out of uh, Minneapolis and uh, they've been making these pumps now for about five years and uh, these are uh, very user friendly and we're going to show you how easy it is to take it apart. This is a triplex pump with three plungers that actuate three diaphragms. And there's an inlet and an outlet uh, set of valves. The inlet connections on this particular pump are NPT, so they're threaded connections on either side, but you can also get them with flange connections. Right now I'm going to take apart the discharge valves as well as the suction valves and then show you how to access the diaphragms on this pump. I've pre-loosened these nuts just to make it easier to take apart. So first we're going to take out the discharge valve and it's just a series of four bolts here. And then there's a valve that comes out and there's a... Wanner did a nice job of making slots on the head so you can pry this out easily and take this off. Now this valve cap has a floating design that the valve guy nests in and then the valves inside here you get a series of tools with the pump that um, allow you to take it apart. So you can insert this tool to extract the valve and it comes out this way. It's a spring-loaded valve. It has a metal housing with a spring, a valve, and a seat. And that's the discharge valve. There's three of them since this is a triplex pump. It's O-ring mounted. If you happen to be pumping something that sticks or is uh, the valve may be stuck inside, you can actually Put the, there's an extraction tool, kind of like a fulcrum you can use to pull this valve out. So all three valves are the same, so I'm not going to take out these other two, but this is the discharge valve on this pump. Wainer also makes a quintuplex pump with five diaphragms. This pump's rated to 97 gallons a minute at 1500 psi. The same pump with a different head can go to 5,000 PSI. So I'm going to leave this here, but this sits on here like this, and this then drops down in place like this. And this holds it in place here. So those are the three suck, uh, discharge valves. Now we're going to take the suction valve out. Again, I've loosened these just to make it easier to come apart. On the suction side, this valve plate comes out as one complete assembly versus three individuals. So once I've taken this off, there's screwdriver slots here too if you have to get in and pry this valve assembly apart here. These come out and these are floating valve retainers just like this floats and it nests inside here and this nests on here. So these come out like this. I'll set these over to the side. And you can see inside here then the three valves that are inside here that actuate. And you can see right there, it's just a bigger version of this discharge valve. So this will come out with a, Wanner makes a valve extraction tool it's almost like a dent puller for a car. You can put one of these inside the valve seat and tap it out. 
like this, or you can lock it in place and pull it out with this fulcrum tool if the valve happens to be stuck in there. So this is a suction valve assembly. This is metal. This is a hardened metal and a hardened valve seat with uh, Elgiloy spring. We can get this head in aluminum bronze and stainless steel duplex stainless or Hastelite. So this is the suction valve. This is the discharge valve. You can see the size difference between the two. But they're real simple, easy valves to disassemble, service, and replace. So you can see we've taken one valve assembly of the three out. They're all three identical. And if you look closely, you can see the diaphragm in there. So we're gonna get, we're gonna access the diaphragms now. I'm, but it's easy to take out. I'll show another valve just disassembled just to take it out. Here's another valve, just as easy to take out as the first one. And they mix and match, it doesn't matter which way they go back in. There's an O-ring here that mounts and nests the valve in the housing. So now we're going to get at the diaphragms themselves. Again, I've loosened these nuts to make it easy to take apart. So we've taken all eight bolts out that hold that on. The nice thing Wanner does, they've machined in these four corner bolts uh, threaded holes that we can put these guides in to slide the cylinder head off. So it makes it real easy to service the diaphragms in place. So if this was connected to your piping here you could break the flange connections or unions or hose leave the pump installed and service the valves and the diaphragms in place i'm going to slide these out of the way so i've got these four guide rods here and then i can just slide the head right back exposing the three diaphragms behind the uh, cylinder head. So these three diaphragms are Buna, Viton, EPDM, or Aflas. And these reciprocate back and forth. They are hydraulically actuated from the back end of the pump. These are held on with little star bolts. So we're just using a standard tool that Wanner supplies with their tool kit to remove the diaphragms. And again, I've loosened these to make it easier to take apart. Here's the diaphragm here. Again, this pump, because it, because it uh, doesn't have packing, it's zero leakage, zero adjustment. So here's the diaphragm that sits inside the housing here. This one happens to be Buna. It's a couple O-rings that seal the screws against. And then this is the flexible Buna diaphragm. So I've just shown how we can take this pump apart quickly. The other two diaphragms are just the same way as this. You can intermix them. doesn't matter that it came out of cylinder one, two, or three. You can put it back the same way. So this pump uses uh, regular motor oil for uh, lubrication. This particular pump takes 18 quarts of uh, 10W30, 10W40, or we use synthetic 20W50. 
That's the front end of the pump. Uh, we'll pause this video and go to the back end just to show how it works. All right, now we've taken apart the liquid end of the WIN or T100 pump, uh, hydraulically actuated diaphragm pump. Now we're just going to come back to the back end where the uh, gear reducer or belt drive uh, motor uh, hooks up to the shaft. This shaft can be there's a cap on the end of this so we could put the motor uh, or, or drive assembly on either side of this just like we can put it on either side of the inlet of the piping uh, the pump there. So this is the hydraulic end here. Uh, this um, has a float assembly in the back here with a sight gauge. So if the oil level, if for some reason we lost oil whether it was a lip seal or a diaphragm ruptured, there's a float assembly in here that would go low or high that would you could wire back to your control panel indicating that there's a problem with the, uh, the pump itself. And we've loosened all the bolts on this so we can take this apart and show you that float assembly. They also have one with a low high dual option. And then back here you can see the shaft here with the connecting rods and the bearings in here. They're easy to service too. There's bearing end caps here that come apart to service the back end of this pump. That's the uh, T100. They have three different sizes and then they have a Q155 uh, quintuplex 5 diaphragm pump as well. And uh, it's an easy pump to work on, quick delivery, and a uh, variety of different liquid end materials for your pumping applications. Up to 5,000 PSI pressure capability, depending on the model, and up to about 160 gallons a minute on the flow rate. Thanks for uh, looking at our video, and if you have any questions, you can contact Pump Supply at www.pumpsupplyinc.com or our phone number 847-841-7867. Thanks a lot and have a great day.